Learning is a continuous process, and for seafarers, this statement holds true as developments in technology and behavioral studies continue to improve and oftentimes even change the way things are done on board a ship. In order to catch up with the trends and not become obsolete, seafarers are usually sent for training while waiting for their next vessel assignment. I started working part-time as an instructor in 2005 at the Philippine Center for Advanced Maritime Simulation and Training, or FOCOMSAT for short. That's one of the training centers in Manila. I did it during vacations from the shipboard assignment, and after all these years, I still teach there from time to time, not only because of the additional income, but also to refresh my own knowledge and continuously develop my communication skills. Now, if ever you have come across the statement, the best way to learn is to teach. <laughs> I can personally vouch for that, as I have realized over the years that I have actually learned a lot more when I started teaching. Before we proceed, I'd like to thank sailors for sponsoring this video and for this awesome t-shirt. If you like one of these, just visit their Facebook page. Link is down below. Back when I was still starting out as an instructor, I used to handle simple subjects like MARPOL and ship security. But as I progressed in rank and teaching experience, I was entrusted to handle more complex technical subjects. In 2006, FOCOMSAT installed its full mission bridge and engine simulator and they sent me to the Maritime Institute of William Barons in Terskelling, Netherlands to be trained as a simulator instructor. Since that time, I have been handling courses using the engine room simulator. So my subject for today is engine room resource management and engine team management and we're using the full mission engine room simulator as a tool to conduct this training. Simulators can be used in many applications for training. Back in the day, the focus was mainly on the technical aspect of a ship's operation, but nowadays, the maritime industry is more keen on enhancing the behavioral side of seafaring. You know, leadership, management, resilience. After all, a big percentage of incidents are caused by human error, which means it's not enough that you know what to do, but more importantly, Will you be able to make the right decisions while facing a lot of pressure? So for your final exercise, we will be simulating a fire in the engine room. Let's see how they behave. The trainees that I usually teach are mostly already in the management level, which means they have years of experience and knowledgeable in the ways of shipboard operation. The scenarios are designed with the engine room and bridge simulator running in integrated mode, so as to simulate actual interaction 
between the engineers and the navigators during maneuvering. Now, as I've already mentioned, some of these guys already have years of experience as captains and chief engineers, so it goes without saying that they know exactly what to do during these operations. But the question is, will they be able to remain stable and do what they need to do while under stressful situations? Sometimes. When people are confident of their skills, there is a tendency to become complacent and a few distractions could cause them to lose focus on the more critical items. Weak signals tend to be ignored and before they know it, it's already too late. They say experience is the best teacher, that we learn from our mistakes. But on board a ship, mistakes can oftentimes be fatal, which is why it is better to make mistakes during simulator training. If you immerse yourself in the scenario and play your role, it can actually provide a sense of realism to the training experience and therefore you learn from your mistakes but without facing the consequence of actually well <laughs> dying a horrible death having learned from their mistakes a significant change in behavior can be seen in the later scenarios communication is much more positive teamwork is at the highest level and priority is given to the most critical items. The team is much more focused on the task and any problems that arise are immediately dealt with effectively. A lot of seafarers complain when they are sent for training, saying that they barely have time to spend with their families and a multitude of other reasons. Well, I understand their sentiments and I can also sympathize. We can't deny that there are some training centers that don't really provide quality training and therefore just end up giving the trainees a certificate which in that case is equivalent to a very expensive piece of paper. But for me, if the training I attend actually ends up with me learning something, I consider that time and money well spent. I see it as an investment in myself, which will give me the skills and qualifications needed to keep myself in the market for future job opportunities. Seafaring is a very competitive industry. It is difficult to break into it and very demanding to stay in it. Technology and trends in the industry continuously evolve and demands additional requirements in the seafarer's already multifaceted skill set. A positive attitude towards training, whether we are the trainer or the trainee, will help us meet that demand and it is up to the seafarers if they will catch up or get left behind.